Hey guys, and welcome to Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Will Meadows. And I'm Sarah Meadows, and today we're looking at Iquazu from Haba. In this game, players will be attempting to collect some gorgeous jewels and hide them behind the Iquazu waterfalls of Argentina. It is a two to four player set collection and area influence game that plays in about 50 minutes. Let's take a look at it now. You'll begin by assembling the board and choosing the point track for the correct number of players. Place the bonus tiles face down and then place the water frame on the left and the waterfall strips to the right. Then the first column of tiles are flipped over and everyone is dealt three cards. The first player takes the gym box, and the player to their right takes the water box. On their turn, players will either draw four cards or spend cards to place one gym. Gym spots in the first column will cost you one card, the second column costs two, and so on. If the player has the water box, one drop is added to the top available location in the first column. Once the first column has been entirely filled with gyms or water drops, it is immediately scored. The bonus tiles are awarded, with ties being awarded to the player whose gems are furthest to the right and closest to the water snakes below. After scoring, Cylon the water dragon moves to the right, changing the water's flow and revealing a new set of tiles. The water boxes pass to the right and play continues. Play will continue in this manner until the red column is completely filled. The final three columns are scored at the same time and the player with the most points wins. So we're looking at an abstract strategy game that's got a pretty cool theme plugged onto it, and uh, I think it's really an interesting addition to the Haba line because what we've seen from them in the past is very like kid-focused games that are really simple, lots of bright yellow. Uh, this game really kind of steps it up as far as strategy goes. It's still very family-friendly, uh, and it's not a complex strategy game, but it definitely will have more broad appeal to the average gamer, I think. Yeah, it is an abstract strategy game, and... Uh, personally, I feel like the theme is a little bit pasted on, but I didn't feel like that took away from the experience at all because the gameplay is very simple and the components are absolutely amazing. So I felt like uh, even though the theme wasn't quite meshed with it as well as it could have been, uh, I still had an overall enjoyable experience. Yeah, and I actually kind of disagree with that. I think the whole stuff behind a waterfall thing is really clever. I don't know how you would have put any other mechanic with that theme. Uh, I did like the components. I think it's cool, the little boxes that stuff go in and how you rotate those around so that uh, you know which player is the start player, but you've also got some other control stuff going on with the other players being able to choose where those water drops go. Uh, there are a decent number of choices in the game, even though you've only got those two options on your turn, where to place it, uh, deciding whether to push it way down the line and try to try have an advantage on future rounds or just get the cheap stuff and rack up the points uh, kind of gives you some neat choices each turn. Yeah, we didn't mention one other rule in the game is that uh, if you have um, two of one same color of card, you can trade them in, trade them in for uh, a color that you would like instead. So that kind of helps balance out if you have a bunch of cards in your hand that you don't really want to use or have spots available for. Um, one other thing, I think this is one that, you know, 10, 20 years ago, uh, we probably would have lots of copies of it out. We'd see it everywhere. People would be playing it. Probably would have won a spilled yards. Uh, but with the market being very oversaturated right now, uh, I think it just gets lost, which is very unfortunate. Yeah, it is a really solid game. Uh, I think the theme is funny in that it kind of looks like Avatar. Uh, I don't see how that could have been an accident. That's got to be kind of on purpose. you got the big blue person right in the front. Uh, anyway, it's a really enjoyable game. We played it at lower player counts and higher player counts. You get a very similar experience every time, which is pretty great. And yeah, we've really enjoyed this one. If it sounds like something that you might want to check out, then definitely give it a look online or on Haba or at your local friendly game store. And then, as always, we appreciate you guys subscribing to our channel. We love bringing new content to you guys all the time, and we hope to see you in our next video. Good? Yep. This board game has players attempting to hide some beautifully shiny, wonderful, jewelry gold things behind the Iquazu River waterfalls in the Argentina land. In this game, players will be attempting player will be. In this game, players will be attempting to collect a set of gorgeous jewels and hide them behind the behind the ika. So hard to say words. In this board game, players will be attempting to collect some gorgeous gems and hide them behind the Iquazu waterfalls of Argentina. 
This is a two to four player set collection and area influence game and it plays in about 50 minutes. Let's take a look at the game now. Now let's do it again without thunder. Thank you, background noise. 